So, now what should I talk about? I'm kind of feeling in a cranky mood. I'm kind of feeling like, um, you know, I've tried, I've tried the whole trying to be a class act thing. It didn't work. <laughs> I went, I went three years, um, being treated like shit at this bar. Letting people assume what they were assuming, the sleazy thing that they were assuming about me. Never opening my mouth and defending myself while this bartender never bothered to defend me either. Just sat back and watched it happen. You know, I could say a lot of things about him, but I feel like I've kind of run dry. You know, um, I've said everything. I've described everything. Um, like I say, I, I don't lie, but I have been known to exaggerate. Well, I could certainly exaggerate and, and really make this out to be a lot a lot worse than it was. Because <laughs> really what it was was very trivial. You know, it's like one of those things that happens all the time at bars. That's that's what I've been told. And I've told, I've told several friends who are kind of wise to the ways of the world and it's like oh Diane that is that happens all the time you know bartenders prey on on women all the time who are depressed lonely whatever uh, it's it's the most it's as common as dirt and um, you know and if corporations or restaurants gave a damn um, for every customer that had this happen to them at their establishment, they wouldn't have any staff. <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of feel like, you know, I think it says it all, this this bartender. Um, he's the kind of person that would hide behind a woman and let, and rather than take responsibility for what was his idea and face the music and be honest, he'd sit back and let somebody who saved a friend of his and went through two years of taking care of a friend of his be treated the way I was treated at that bar and anybody watching this video who was there knows exactly what I'm talking about saw it happen so that brings me to the guy that I took care of for two years the guy who told me that you know well all you did was dial three numbers yeah, there's a lot I could say about him. Um, I've also tried to hold my, keep that to myself because I think it's incredibly wrong. It goes against everything I, I feel and believe in my heart to discuss somebody's such a personal, personal thing as, as that. You know, I could say that when I was at the hospital, you know, the nurses got to know me by name. I can't even say how many times I had nurses ask me if I was this man's girlfriend. And when I said, no, I'm just a friend, they were just totally amazed that, I, they, they, man, you're, you're really a good friend to him. I mean, I can't even say how many times I had nurses just shake their heads at me like, wow, you know, where did you come from? Like, like they had never seen somebody like me before who would go and, and sit by at the side of a man who was just, you know. Uh, and that the day that he, that he refers to about me calling three numbers, if I had walked out the door and gone to work, he'd be dead right now. But that's not the only time that my actions made it made a huge difference for him. What I look at is how many times did he scare the hell out of me and how stressful was that for me to see somebody that I care for that ill. Did it bring back memories of my dad and his illness? Yeah, it did. So that's all I'm going to say. I just think that, you know, in the past I've I've withheld all the stories, all the gruesome stories that I could say because it goes against the grain for me to be that mean. But sometimes like today, I find myself wondering why the fuck do I keep this to myself? Why don't I just tell everything? Why do I care what 
what happens and who says what or who, who thinks what about this man. Why should I care anymore about him? Why should I care about these people who have cared so little for me?